Good day. The following video depicts expert field medical badge evacuation task number four, evacuated casually using a SCED litter standardization training. The video consists of the task grader selecting and utilizing a test candidate to demonstrate to a group of other candidates as he talks through task performance steps while ensuring to provide guidance and corrections during the demonstration. Please note that uniforms depicted during standardization training differ from those required during testing by the EFMB Test Control Office. The video was recorded in April 2023 utilizing the June 2022 testing standards. No. no? Anybody worked with a SCED before? Yes. yes. Okay. Who's the most who's confident with a SCED here? Okay, I'll have you be the like demonstrator while we're talking through the steps so that you get an you get a rep while we're with the constraint of time you'll get a rep through. Okay? Um, push my clipboard. Alright. My name is Sergeant Metal, uh, Sergeant Williams. Your task here is to evacuate a casualty using a SCAD basic rescue system. Conditions. You are assigned to a unit conducting military operations. You will have a litter casualty that must be packaged in a SCAD litter for transport. You will need a SCAD litter for assemblage. Standards. Transport a casualty using a SCAD litter without causing injury to the casualty while adhering to all warnings, cautions, and task measures with 100% accuracy used utilizing go slash no go criteria. Complete all performed measures in 12 minutes or less. Here are your components for this lane. You have your SCAD bag, you have your SCAD itself, you have your horizontal lift slings, one is labeled head and the other one will have no label that's for your lower portion you have a locking d-ring and then you have your v-line with your breakaway and your two steel screw-on uh, rings right? and then you also have your 250 foot tag line over here as soon as uh, each lane these bags are going to be packaged so that they're ready to go as soon as you touch the bags the hammer start okay. um, so I'll talk through the steps and then you'll just follow through the prompts um, I won't time you we're not timing anybody but we're gonna talk through the steps so that you get the same extra rep that you would in the lane. Yeah, okay. all right step one evaluate the casualty according to the tactical situation and determine if a spinal injury is suspected so you would just verbalize that or you would control C spine um, would I control C-spine? Yeah, you could co control C-spine or and then I would just prompt you uh, no, no spinal injury suspected for uh, EFMB testing purposes. Uh, controlling C-spine, stabilization. Yep, you no know, spinal injury suspected. Alright. Okay, alright. Open the Cordura backpack and remove the sked litter and place onto the ground. Unroll sked and maneuver until sked lays flat on the ground. Iteration will yeah we'll make sure that portion is pretty straight. Right now they're just trying to go through the constraints of time. That's why everything's just so rushed. But as when it's for the testing, it'll all be nice straightened out. All right, place the sked adjacent to the casualty. So. 
you can have multiple options on how you want to place the patient onto the sked. You can log roll the patient to the sked. You can place the sked above the patient and uh, drag it upwards to the sked, right? You can shimmy the patient onto the sked. It's really on what you're most comfortable with. But the key thing is to make sure that you're doing it into you're not causing further harm to the casualty or you're not trying to throw him onto the litter, right? Which is some professional. So try to do your best to make it as long as possible. Another thing, ensure the four cross shots are not laying on the stretcher surface so that they do not lie under the casualty when the casualty is applied to the stretcher. Right? So make sure the straps are not on the sked as he puts it on. Another thing, make sure the patient is centered properly onto the sked because that will bite you back in the end later. center the casualty onto the sked litter. You're allowed to straddle your patient. That's fine. Yeah. Buckle the cross straps. For the weapons, you can just have it within arm's reach or you can have it slung across your back. Uh, yeah, it's up to you, but as long as it's within arm's reach, I would prefer you to put it in on top of the back of your legs so that you don't forget it. So when you're doing these straps, ensure that they're not twisted, crossed, or tangled. Those are like the key things we're looking for in this or half knot ends on the cross straps and tuck the excess on the inside of the sked litter with the casual. So go tie a half hitch or half knot or safety knot on that strap and then just tuck them in.
straps. Feed the foot straps through the unused grommets located closest to the fourth cross straps at the foot end of the sked litter. So it'll be on these and then he'll feed them from the inside out and make sure it's not twisted or crossed. Uh, it also depends on the patient, what kind of patient you have. Like if they are a bigger patient, their foot might be sticking out, that's fine. Just make sure their foot is properly secured. Like if they're bigger, right, their foot will be cross coming out of this side, which is fine. Just make sure they're not like, these straps are not in the way or uh, they look improperly securing the casualty. Right. right, so I forgot about this part. Is it yeah. uh, through here? No, 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 you put them on. Oh, this. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Another key thing too, whenever you uh, tighten down your slacks on these um, straps, right? You might tighten down one side, another side will have an additional slack. So just keep that in mind. Every time you tighten down straps, you're adding slack to the other straps. But all in the end, the end result, it has to be all tightened and secured. So make sure you keep that in mind whenever you're tightening down straps. hitch slash half knot or safety strap safety knots at the end of foot straps and tuck the excess on the inside of the sked litter with a casualty Insert horizontal lift slings. So your lift slings are over here. They're gonna be located inside the bag. Oh um, yeah, yep. this is the part where uh, I've never done. Yeah, this. you're fine. That's why I'll talk you through it. Uh, one is labeled head, and the other don't have a label. The one that's labeled head strap is shorter than the other one. So that's how you can make sure how they're different from each other. So what you'll do, he'll shimmy this head strap. Now, when you're doing this, make sure there's no obstructions in the way. For example, like that drag strap. If it was, if it was in the way and he shimmies that, that will take, eat up most of his time later on. So make sure nothing's in the way when you're securing these slings. Go ahead. Uh, under the skid? Yeah, under the yeah. skid. And you're gonna insert them from the outside in. And then it's gonna oh, okay. come out, all right? So best way is you go from the top, but whatever way you prefer. Yeah. Go from the top? Yeah, go from shimmy the top and you shimmy it down. Yeah, like this? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then make sure these stitch ends are facing inwards and make sure they're not twisted or crossed in any way. Yeah, even in length, make sure they're perpendicular to the angled slits too, so that there's no slack when you lift these uh, sked off, right? Extend both ends of the horizontal lift sling and ensure they have equal length. Shimming it equal length. Okay, you're good. All right. Run the additional horizontal lift sling, not labeled head strap, under the outside of the sked litter to align with the angled lift slots closest to the third closest strap at the foot end of the litter so that's the bottom side
again you want these slings right horizontal uh, oriented downwards so that you know that there there's no slack go ahead Extend both ends of the horizontal lift sling and ensure that they both have equal length. Right, shimming it, equal length. Okay. Another key tip here, you want these slings to be inside and out of this third strap. The reason being is that if, sorry, if you keep it like this and you hoist them all together, it'll catch onto this third strap and it'll cause friction between the straps. So that's gonna be a safety hazard. So make sure it's ran through the inside and out. Yep, that's good. All right, prepare the head portion of the sked litter for hoist operation. That's now gonna work on the head. Uh, just like, yeah. The head side, you will remove the slack. I'll talk you through it. Bend the head portion of the sked litter over the casualty and remove the excess slack from the drag strap until the litter maintains its curve over the casualty's head. Note, ensure that the curved portion of the stretcher at the casualty's head doesn't make contact with the casualty's skin. This will prevent further injury to the casualty during actual hoisting of the stretcher. So make sure this doesn't dig into their forehead. All right, so go ahead and yeah, remove as much slack as you can. Uh, the casualty will be wearing an ACH, so that will really prevent you from um, making that mistake, right? Excuse me, sir. Does it matter if that's twisted on that part? No. No. Okay, good. I figured with the amount of repetition people run through the sked, it'll put a lot of twists and turns into these straps and I don't think it'll be reset it completely to that perfect point, right? So, and if anything, if would it affect how you were to evacuate a casualty if these straps are twisted? No, not at all. So yeah, as long as it's not digging into their head, it's good. All right. <clears throat> Tie the drag strap to the middle of the second cross strap in a half knot. So you're bringing that drag strap to the second cross strap to, and tie it in the middle and tie a half knot. Or you could do a safety knot too. Uh, watch out, it's all twisted and everything. Un untangle that. And that's reset, that's good. So there's two ways you can do this, right? You can you can tie it as is, or you can move this out of the way, and whichever way works for you, shooter's preference, right? And remember, when you're doing this, go ahead, take this. When you're tying this knot, make sure you're not tugging on this too much, because this will bring it down and make contact with the casualty head. So the intent is to secure this drag strap down into the sked. So the third one, right? Uh, the second, second cross strap. Yeah. Insert the large locking D steel carabiner. So take the carabiner right there. So the orientation will be head, foot, foot, head. Doesn't matter clockwise or counterclockwise. It'll be one big sweeping motion. So go ahead. You'll secure it to one of these slings. Right? So key tip here. Kind of want to just hold it on one side so that you kind of leave room for less error you just easy like that head right head then foot foot oh, okay. head yeah so head to foot yeah head okay. to foot, right. foot foot yeah. that's the order you'll see why uh no make sure you put this two. Oh, all four all four yeah okay. head foot foot head Okay. 
locked secured right so when you lift it you can do a self check right make sure it's all equal in length now attach the v-strap of the heli tag tag line kit to the foot end of the stretcher with the locking snap link carabiners at the unused grommet so your tag lines right there with that bag yep bring the bag with you too because the ropes can extend These are the unused grommets. We're gonna have to walk you through this one. Sorry, I've never yeah, done you're this good. Either, yeah, you're fine, man. The easiest way is outside in, outside in, right there. Simple as that. Make sure you lock it too. Ensure the weak link breakaway cord is present and attaches the 250 foot tag line to the V strap with two stainless steel screw links. So, this is your breakaway cord and this is your two stainless steel screw links, right? right. Yep, you're just uh, emphasizing that you're inspecting it and that it's there. Alright, now next, perform final safety checks. Check all four cross straps. So if you had any deficiency that you probably didn't identify earlier, but you find it here and you correct it, you still get a go, right? So he's checking his four cross straps. So just check the four cross straps first. Oh, yeah. So that you kind of just put that in your mind, like the steps, right? Just the cross straps. Yep, just the cross straps. Boom. And the last one. Good. Check the two foot straps. There's the two foot straps down there. Good. Ensure that the horizontal lift strap labeled head strap is actually at the head of the sked litter. So he's gonna check the head strap, ensure that it's labeled head strap. It's labeled head. Yep. Yeah. Ensure that all four horizontal lift sling ends are even in length so that the load will be lifted evenly. So just lift on that carabiner, ensure that they're all equal in length. And remember the orientation. So hold on. Remember the orientation of the the how you put it through right it's head foot foot head so when it's hoisted it'll all be equal so this can be a little bit uh, strained out but you know for demonstration we're moving through the movement all right next Ensure that the large locking D steel carabiner has been fed through all four ends of the horizontal lift sling ends. Oh. So making sure that you fed all through. Yep. Ensure that the gate screw on the large locking D steel carabiner has been screwed down completely and the gatekeeper is not able to freely open. So make sure that carabiner is fully locked, seated, and it can't open. Good. Ensure the locking snap link carabiners attaching the V-strap are secured. So those two uh, locking carabiners down there, make sure they're secured. They're locked. All right. 13. Did not cause further injury to the casualty. Then completed all required performance steps slash measures within 12 minutes. 